So today we're gonna test and review a 50 amp DC to DC battery charger with MPPT. So this just simplifies your life if you are mounting a solar power system to a vehicle such as a van or an RV. So typically you will have a starting battery and you will have a solar battery or your coach battery. And this one is charged by the alternator and this one is charged by the solar panels. Well, what this does is goes between all three systems. You connect solar panels, coach batteries, and the starting battery of your vehicle. And this will modulate the power between all of them. And to make this as simple to understand as possible, this unit right here replaces a traditional DC to DC battery charger and an MPPT. So if you just combine these two, this is what you get. And what's crazy is this can handle 660 watts of solar panel power and 660 watts coming from the alternator. So this thing can push some serious power. I mean, just the cost savings over buying an MPPT and DC to DC battery charger make this super cheap and great for van and RV dwellers. But what I wanna know is how well it works because there are so many problems that could occur when designing this kind of system. And a big common complaint that I've heard from a lot of people with these DC to DC battery chargers is that this one is not voltage sensing. So if you buy like $400 or $500 sterling, it will tell when the alternator is on and it will turn itself on and start charging. This one doesn't work that way you have an ignition circuit wire input. So this needs to get like 13 or 14 volts or whatever, and it will say, oh, okay, now I will turn on. And then it will start charging your solar battery. And a lot of people that do not understand ignition circuits and how to wire them up get really confused and they can't do the settings, these DIP switches. I personally think this was dead simple and it worked perfectly for me, but I've heard a lot of people complain. So what I'm curious to know is how much easier this unit will be. So yeah, we're gonna connect it to these two battleborns. This will be our starting battery and this will be our solar battery and we'll see what happens when we hook it up. So first we have four screws to take off these covers. And under the covers, we have these terminal studs. So we have a PV positive, which will connect to the positive wire of your solar panel array. We have an alternator positive, which will connect to either the starting battery or your alternator positive. And then we have an out positive. So this will go to the solar battery bank positive, And then this is negative. This will go to all the negatives for all of these power sources. And on the side, we have a communication port. We have a BTS for the temperature sensor. We have a BVS, which is battery voltage um, sampling. So it tells the unit what the voltage of the battery is directly from the battery. And then we have ignition. If you have a smart alternator and you want to be able to turn it on manually or something, that's where you do it. And then you have some lights on the front that tell you what's going on. And on the back, we have a huge heat sink. And after reading the manual, I realized that this has a voltage sensitive relay inside. This one doesn't. So it's nice that this actually has a voltage sensitive relay. At the price point compared to Sterling and Red Arc, that's really good. But overall, it's super simple. You just have a couple studs. And because the whole point of this unit is to charge the solar battery in various ways, we are going to add an amp meter between the Battleborn and this unit so we can see how much power is going into the Battleborn. And I can tell you right now that the number one reason that people will mess up when installing this is not using the proper size gauge wire and various connection points. So this battery is gonna be very far away from this battery. So measure and figure out what size gauge wire you need to connect all this stuff together. For this test, I'm gonna use some six and four gauge pure copper welding cable. Something I just noticed is that these studs are huge and you can totally accommodate like three or four huge lugs on here. So that's really good. So after reading the manual, this unit will be triggered by any voltage on the starting battery over 13.2 volts. Then it will start charging the solar battery. But if it's below 12.7, it will turn it off. And the solar charging will be triggered if the solar input voltage is higher than 15 volts. I have some bad news. So the max solar input voltage is 25 volts. This is an MPPT. Typically with those, I like 80 to like 200 volts. This is only 25 volts. That means for anybody using these in a vehicle mounted system, you're gonna have to put all of your panels together in parallel. And the limit for most MC4 connections 
for those parallel connections on your roof with branch adapters is gonna be, I think, 25 or 20 or 30 amps. So when you're connecting your solar panels, you need to check how many amps are coming down. Also, you're probably gonna be running 10 or even eight gauge wire to bring all of those amps down to this unit. And now it's completely connected. So we have a positive wire from the solar battery, and then we have a negative wire going to the common negative, and then negative wire going to the alternator or starting battery, and then a positive going down to alternator positive. So all we need to do is add voltage on this side, and it will start pushing power over to this battery. I actually do not know what the state of charge of these batteries is, so we're, we might be in for a surprise. Oh, we've got 12.6, so this battery is depleted. We've got 12.8, so I need to charge this up to 13.2, and then once it hits that threshold, then it will start charging this battery. I'm kind of glad that these are depleted, because then I can test when it hits it, and we can watch the voltage and everything. And I'm pretty impatient, so we're gonna use an all-in-one unit charger to charge up this starting battery. So now we're charging up the starting battery, and let's check the voltage. We have 13.07 and we have a red light at the alternator. And what's crazy is it started charging already. We're at 13.8 amps going through this unit. Actually, what would be smart to do is to disconnect the solar battery for now because I don't want them to charge up together. I want this one to be extremely discharged and this one to be fully charged to see how much power we can push through this unit. And I wanna see what happens if I disconnect one of the batteries. So now we disconnected the battery and we're not pushing anything. So now my charger is only charging up this battery and then we'll wait till it rises in voltage and then we'll connect the other battery. You know what's crazy is it actually trickle charges the starting battery when this one is fully charged with solar power. So that's incredible. If you have a vehicle in storage and you have solar panels on the roof, you can just leave it in there and this will take care of both batteries. That's really nice. I should have reviewed this months ago. This thing is really cool. But keep in mind, if you guys have a smart alternator, you need to wire up the ignition wire. So if you have a normal alternator, you don't have to do anything. Everything's automatic. You just connect the wires to your batteries and you're done. All right, guys, it's been charging all day long. So let's see what voltage we have. 14.59. So we're just going to connect this negative and see how many amps we can push through this. 51 amps. So it's rated for 50 amps, but we're pushing 51. And so it pushed 50 amps at first, but as these equalize, the amperage is dropping. And you guys can hear a cooling fan in the background, and that's the battery charger that's connected to the starting battery. So as this dips down, the battery charger is increasing amperage and it's charging faster and faster to compensate for how much this is drawing from this battery. And to make this fun, we are going to add 20 volts to the solar panel input and see what happens. And so now we have 24 volts at five amps coming from our power supply. And look at the solar panel light is illuminated. So check this out, you guys. This light just turned on and now it's charging with solar. Or it would be solar if this was a solar panel, but it's nighttime right now. So we're just gonna use this. And so we have 13.3 volts at 35 amps. So that's 465 watts going into the solar battery and 100 watts is coming from our power supply or our fake solar power system. And then the rest is coming from this battery and the battery charger connected to this. I must also add though, it is preferable to have the battery voltage sensing wires connected right here. These wires are very thick and it's a very short run. So it's okay for me just to connect it all together like this. But when you install it, read the manual and add those wires to the BVS. That will help with the charging. So it has an accurate voltage of the battery so it can charge properly. But yeah, it works. It's so easy, guys. You just connect it and boom, it works. And if this starting battery was at a higher voltage and we actually had an alternator that could push more than 50 amps, we would be able to push 50 amps through this continuously. And the heat sink on the back is actually getting very warm right now. So it's been a few hours and it's dropped down to eight amps. So it will slowly drop to zero as these two batteries equalize in voltage. Now I finally learned how to change the battery type indicator because it wasn't really in the manual and I found a Renergy how-to video. So check this out. You have a small button that you can access with a paper clip or a small pointy tool. And what you wanna do is press this small button inside the hole 
and then this light color will change and the color of the light will correspond to a various type of battery. So for lithium, we want to have it on a blue light. And now that it's blue, it is set and it will charge a lithium iron phosphate battery with an appropriate charge profile. If you want to use another type of battery, read the manual and it will show you the different types and what color light corresponds to each one. And that confused me. I couldn't find that information anywhere. But yeah, tiny little button over there, guys. And after messing around with it a little bit and reading the manual, I finally figured out what all of these lights mean and what they do. So first we have the alternator light and when the starting battery is charging and the alternator is charging it, this will give you a solid red light. When it is flashing, that means that the starting battery is being trickle charged by solar. When it is off as it is right now, that means that this battery is not charging and nothing is going on. The next charging indicator is the solar panel LED. And this is another red LED. And when we have power here, we will have a solid light and that is bulk charge. There are quite a few variations of flashing that will tell you whether it's in float mode or boost mode. And when this light is off, that means that it is not charging at all. The next light is the battery indicator for the solar battery or whatever's connected over here. And when it's green, that means that the battery is full. And then if it's yellow, that means that the battery voltage is normal. But if you have a red and it's on or there's a slow or fast flashing, that means that you have an over or under voltage situation. And this is the battery type indicator. So you use the button over here to change it like we mentioned previously. And if you have a sealed lead acid, you want it to be green. If you have a gel battery, you want it to be yellow. And if you have a flooded battery, you want it to be red. And then if you have a lithium like we have right now, you want it to be blue. And then white means debug, and I'm not sure what that actually means. I couldn't find that in the manual. But if you just change this little setting with this button over here, you can program what battery you have. For the next test, we have connected a pure sine wave inverter with pure copper cable to the solar battery. And we're going to put a load on this battery, and we're going to see how many amps will go through this unit. Right now, I have the solar power connected and a battery charger on the starting battery. So this will mimic a vehicle going down the road with solar power available and alternator power available. And right now, it's already pushing 25 amps. So yeah, let's add a load and see what happens. And we're pushing 27 amps at 13 volts. And that's interesting because I have a 20 amp charger connected right now. And this mimics 5 to 7 amps at 12 volts after losses. And it's just crazy because we're pushing exactly that amount. So let's turn one of these off and see what happens. Look at that. Now we have only 18.8 .8 amps. Now let's disconnect the charger and the battery indicator light is flashing red. And that's a battery over discharge or battery under voltage situation. So I just realized why this was turning off. It's because this Battleborn can only handle 100 amp discharge rate. And right now with this 1500 watt load, we're pushing more than what this can handle. So it's disconnecting this and the inverter. That's why they both shut off at the same time. So this is probably the worst way to actually test this. So let's add the charger and try to run this load. Even though this battery cannot handle it, if the charge rate of this exceeds and helps the Battleborn by 30 amps or so, it should be able to power this heat gun. But we're really pushing this stuff to the limit. Now the battery charger is on and the solar panel and we have 27 amps. So 27 plus 100 from this, so 127 amps should be able to power this. So we're gonna add a watt meter and see how many watts this is actually pulling. So it's 1440, and then we have to also think that this loses 10%, so we need to add another 150 watts. So this is actually exceeding the max load of this and this. It will still power it for a little while, but yeah, we are pushing it by 100 watts or more. And I think it'd be pretty boring if I just reduced the load, but we know that it can actually run a load that is exceeding the limits of our equipment and it will shut down. The inverter shuts down and this will shut down. And you can see that the red light is flashing and then it will turn itself back on when it starts charging up again. What I like about it is no matter how much I screw with it, it turns itself on. Look, it's still charging. Like this is really beginner friendly. People that do not want to mess with this or go in here and change settings, you just hook it up and you're pretty much done. 
Another thing I want to point out is that this is a true MPPT because the working voltage at the input side does not decrease. If this was a switching regulator, it would actually decrease and they wouldn't lie. Renogy isn't going to lie. They're held accountable for their actions. If one person found out that they're selling a fake MPPT, it would be all over the reviews and nobody would buy from them. It's so funny because there's a couple of YouTubers that posted videos of fake MPPTs and they were so obviously not MPPT. Just going by the weight and the size of alone and everyone's freaked out now they're like is that a fake MPPT it's like the chance of a fake MPPT is so rare and it's so easy to spot you guys shouldn't be worried about that especially from a reputable distributor or seller you will never run into that but a lot of people always want to ask hey is that actually MPPT and you can tell by the working voltage of the panels so if you connect your panels to a switching regulator, it will be only 12 volts. I actually made another video on this, but I need to cover that again because I'm sure people will ask. So now let's talk about if you should actually buy this unit. I really, really like it. It is dead simple, and if you push it past its limits, it will reset itself. It's easy to program, and everything works, and it pushes a lot of power. The one thing I dislike though is that the PV input, the voltage, is very low. So that means you're going to have to put a bunch of 12 volt panels in parallel and you can exceed the current limitations of MC4 adapters or those little connectors that you put all your solar panels together with. So what I'm going to do is add a custom page to my website just for this unit and I'm going to draw up some schematics. And I'm going to show you the max solar size array, which is going to be around 400 watts. And then I'm going to suggest which adapters to use so that everything works together nicely and it's safe. But I really do like this system. There's also multiple ways to wire it, and I'm going to put different schematics. Because you could use the common ground and tie this to the chassis, and then have everything else tie to chassis with the ground. And then you'll only have like one red wire, one red wire, and then one red wire going up to your solar panels. So I'm going to post that all on the website. But yeah, I really like this unit. There has not been a single thing that I dislike. It's simple, it's easy to use, and it actually works, and it's powerful. So I'm really excited. I was actually scared because I saw the ignition input and I thought that that was going to be for traditional alternators, but that's only for smart alternators. So it's very different than Renogy's other DC to DC chargers. It's all voltage sensing and you don't have to do anything. You just connect it with a couple cables and you're done. Also on the new page, we're going to talk about what size cables. They say that you can use four or six gauge. I'm going to recommend everybody right now using four gauge copper wire, absolutely for sure. And yeah, I think the van life and the RV crowd are going to eat these up. I think the reason no one's using them is they're scared and the manual doesn't tell everything in simplistic terms like the battery type changing. But now that we have this video and I know that it works and it's dead simple and we'll have a schematic, I think a lot of people are gonna buy these. And I like this system so much that I built a small example system and I'll have high definition pictures available on my website. So this is only a 1500 watt inverter. This is gonna be the solar battery, bus bar, circuit breakers, and the Renogy DC-DC with MPPT. I want people to know how to build it safely though, so I will have high quality UL listed marine grade circuit breakers on the website. I'm also gonna tell you what size wire to use and where these wires go. And it's a pretty simple, straightforward process, but if you see it on a board, it makes it a lot easier. Because you know that big mess of wires on my desk? Some people might be scared, but if you see it like this, just a bus bar, circuit breaker, this goes out to the inverter, and then two wires over to this unit, and then two wires up to the solar panel, and then a single four gauge wire going out to your starter battery or your alternator, and then ground everything, then you're pretty much done. So please check out the website, and I hope this makes it as easy as possible, because this thing is pretty sweet, and it's so easy to use. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.